Hi guys, uh, Test Pro Channel with you. My name is Evgeny Kim, and today uh, we have an interview with our partners and uh, authors and instructors of the brand new course of XUI Test. Let's go and check. Hi guys, as you know from the beginning we are test pro was the, the core idea of the test pro is to build the platform educational platform where the people can get the uh, QA knowledge from the zero to to the sky is li the limit and I'm happy to announce that test pro uh, decided to collaborate with greatest one of the greatest in the United States iOS uh, instructors for uh, mobile test automation and um, I want to introduce Igor and Boris team from Tinder and welcome guys thank you could you please introduce yourself and tell us a just a little bit about your background and what are you doing right now um, so, as uh, Eugene mentioned, uh, I'm Igor, I lived in this country for more than 20 years and um, in uh, IT industry I've spent probably more than a decade already. Um, was starting my career early days as the manual tester and uh, proceeded like forward uh, in engineering uh, as a test automation engineer back in 2011 and uh, entered to the management in 2013. I uh, worked in companies such as uh, Expedia, Barnes & Noble. Now I'm engineering manager at Tinder. I'm Boris and um, I have uh, the master's degree in computer science from USC. Uh, I work as an iOS engineer for the last couple of years at Tinder and uh, I'm keen on building some complicated uh, things, and complicated tools for uh, iOS automation. So that's what we teach. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about about the course itself? What is the outcome? First of all, I wouldn't call this a course because we were looking for the name and after like three or four tries, we still couldn't come up with the crystal clear description of what it is, bootcamp, course, class. <laughs> and what I tell the students, this is actually a life of engineer. Mm -hmm. We introduce you to the like one month of how you would live as an engineer in the company. Yeah. We'll teach things that not many courses teach you is actually how to build pull requests, how to work in Git flow environment, um, how to work with merge complex, uh, how to work in the large teams. Um, imagine there will be 20 students in the class, 30 students in the class. We divide them by the functional groups. Uh, we work with the uh, GitHub project management like issues and labeling and uh, project management so the students will experience a life of true engineer including coding and resolving problems this course uh, is focused primarily on a native solution it means that for this course myself and Boris and a team of engineers we have actually in Ukraine build a app specifically for this course including the back end we even engage our designer to build design for this app. So you, you as a student will feel what it means to be an engineer working in real project. And uh, the funny thing that since we introduced this app two years ago, right? Actually mm -hmm. three right now, 2016, right? Yeah. We keep changing this. We update this as the new version of Xcode updated. We keep updating the back end of this and front end. As students file bugs, we fix the bugs. Mm -hmm. So it's a live project, right? Plus, every time we finish the class, we always retrospect how we can improve the app, what students liked, didn't like, so we incorporate it back into the application. So our course never repeats itself. Uh, right, so uh, many courses out there show you the sunny day, and they just show uh, the easiest part of uh, the life of engineer, the best parts, we say, right? And then uh, when the student like, really goes out on the market, uh, they understand that that's not that easy. 
we show the opposite side. We throw you in the real work environment. We throw you into water and we help you to swim. So uh, we show you the real things and uh, the real problems that uh, you will definitely see in the real company. So the main, the core idea uh, is you know everything already. You've seen everything already uh, once you get the real job. Can you guys tell us uh, a little bit why did you choose XUI test as a main tool that you are teaching people? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And actually, for the matter of fact, I get this question from a lot of our potential students. Why don't you guys teach APU? Why don't you teach us like, you know, other third party frameworks? Why you chose native? And the answer is really simple. We're talking about today's 2019. We're around the corner of 2020. Engineering became part of day to day life, meaning that, that if you want to coexist in a space with IES project, like building application for iPhone, right, and exist in the same environment, you have to be part of engineering team. So that means you have to work with the same code base, uh, you have to be part of the same practices. Uh, we're talking about continuous integration, continuous delivery. Testing has to be as agile as the developing process. It cannot be slower, right? Definitely, if it's faster, even better but definitely have to comply with the best engineering practices. And the reason we chose XUI test because it's native. Number one, it is supported by Apple, and every time new Xcode released, uh, you know, uh, uh, done by Apple, the updated version of XUI test library is actually gonna dump. Number two, and not a lot of people who are familiar with XUI test library, they don't know that it's actually part of XU test library, which is the same unit test library used by developers. So that means you live in the same code space, the same kind of tool set as the developers and they can always help you, which right. is the, probably the major benefit of this. And you will work in the same set of tools like GitHub, let's say. You're gonna the same code repository, you're gonna do the same pull request as developers, you're gonna have the same rules and you will comply with the same practices. So you will learn on the same scale as the developers. If they introduce new architecture to be part of it, mm -hmm. if they introduce, uh, you know, if the, if, the whole, if the whole project moves to a new version of Swift, you're gonna move with them. If, you, uh, like I said earlier, if you need help from developers, they can help you out because they can look at the code base. Right. If, the step fa if your test fails, we know that developers are not gonna fix it, but at least they can point you to the right direction. We always underline that Flaky test is, wor is worse than no test. So uh, we want to build the solid test, the fast test, the stable test, the test that we can control easily. And uh, so far, only native solutions allow us to do this. I see. So what I'm seeing that it looks like there is a pretty high demand for those type of engineers. The thing is, universities do not produce those kind of uh, job, those kind of people, right. and uh, there are not many boot camps that do the real automation, the real native automation thing. So uh, it's just a real market problem. There is not nowhere the, where you can go and learn these uh, things, Skill. those skills. Yeah, and uh, obviously jobs out there. Uh, more and more like demand is uh, higher and higher because companies slowly start realizing that this is necessary things to uh, to be up to up to speed with with uh, the with other companies this is the top of the pyramid this is the best of the best you can get this profession unless you want to go to management if you think yourself that you don't see yourself as the leader as the director or at least the manager, the software developer engineering task, as that, is the highest of the pyramid, right? right? So therefore, companies are very selective to hire these people. And there is one important aspect, it's a lot of money involved. Because this is an engineering role, it's very concrete engineering role, and it's very rare to find. Right. So a lot of students tell me, how come I go to Glassdoor don't see these jobs? There are two reasons for this. Number one is that not every company needs these people. You have to be very crystal clear about this. But the companies who need this are willing to pay a lot of money for this. However, if we notice the past five years, there's a major shift towards mobile. 
ask yourself, when the last time you used the, your laptop to do anything? Everything we do nowadays is via the cell phones, yeah, cell phone, exactly. Yeah. iPhone market share is incredible. Even five years ago, Android was having actually more market share, but now it's kind of equalizing around the globe. Can you tell a little bit about the southern range, like what they should expect? It's a very interesting question because it depends on the market. Obviously, if you live in North Carolina, the expectation would be different than rather than live in the Silicon Valley or Los Angeles, the South California. Um, what we can see so far from, again, it comes back from our former students, they share with us their success stories. Um, it, can, it can range anywhere from 100,000 to 200, sometimes even $300,000. I know there are companies like uh, Netflix, they're willing to pay a premium for their engineers. Um, there are, some of our students go to the companies that actually need it as soon as possible, and they get paid uh, also premiums for that. So we have to understand this is engineering role. At the end of the day, you will be treated as the IES engineer. And that's why the expectation of the salary will be as an IES engineer. So there should be some requirements to be qualified, even for, the, for your boot camp, right? Uh, yes, of course. We are looking for two types of skill uh, in our potential students. First, uh, the manual test experience is mandatory. It's really uh, important to understand why are we all here. Before, automate, uh, before we can start automating, uh, we should really understand what we are doing here, why do we need to uh, test in general, and what are the processes. This is the most important. Uh, the second is any programming language experience. Uh, we don't, uh, like, if you've never seen Swift before, that's not a problem. Uh, the language itself is not a problem at all. Uh, the, any experience in any programming language would be fine. Um, we can recommend, def we usually recommend different, uh, I don't know, Udemy courses, YouTube, uh, YouTube videos, uh, our own resources, uh, if people uh, do not have that, uh, or uh, they just never worked with Swift particularly. Uh, as I said, any experience would be a great plus. Can you give uh, some examples of your uh, past students, former students, who successfully passed, and what kind of companies they are working on right now? Um, sure. Or like maybe their salaries, kind of info. Sure. So we have uh, very different cases. We have cases uh, when people uh, like were keep working for a couple of months up to six months usually, like four, six months. And we uh, guide those people after the boot camp. We guide you, we uh, give you exact steps, what to do, uh, how to prepare for interview for algorithms, uh, how to uh, keep, um, keep working with your automation frameworks and uh, increase your skills in that. And uh, after that, people uh, found the iOS automate, also I was a stat job first of all, and then they were working like for six months uh, in uh, at, at this role, and then development department just st stole those people, because uh, remember though this uh, Valentin we had this uh, great student oh, yeah. he was very hard working student, and uh, he started work uh, he started his job as a I was a stat, and then uh, developers uh, asked him well, can you fix this bug that your test found? He was, okay, I would do that. After a couple of those bugs, they just offered him <laughs> I was engineer role. <laughs> we had these cases as well, you know. Can you give examples of the companies uh, where they were hired? I mean, there is a huge, from Google to, uh, well, I mean, a lot of startups. Amazon. Amazon, uh, yeah. Apple. From the large ones. Um, what was the other ones? Tinder. <laughs> yeah, one of them I should go to Tinder. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, top students obviously get the uh, great jobs, but um, so basically, like, like what I'm saying, let's say we have a couple students who, uh, like, you know, the 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 whole life dream is to get into those big five companies, right? Everything is possible. Can they can they expect like they finish a boot camp and they? can apply 
to those companies? Absolutely. I mean, we have to be crystal clear that there is no magic bullet. Every person is different. Uh, what we've seen before with Boris is that each person is individual, and even some people have more experience, some people less, it's not determining your success. The, your success will be determined by two factors. How hard you're working and your focus. Right. If you lose, uh, and, uh, what I mean by focus, like for instance, students finish bootcamp for the IES, and then he goes in the market and everybody keeps telling about web. And then the student jumps to like web technology and dive in that and loses all he learned in IES. What we try to teach in bootcamp that if you choose your profession as an IES as that, and pretty much IES engineer, like Boris, his entire career will be IES engineer. He's not going to become backend engineer or web engineer, and that's and it's well well paid profession. It is fine. All you have to just make yourself a dream, a goal, and go towards your goal. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to start working with you, and I think our students are also very excited. So, guys, please sign up on the bottom of the, and you'll see the link there. Uh, and I'll see you there. Thank you. Looking forward. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Jim. You.